Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's Thanksgiving roundtable, I'm joined by the one, the only, the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Doing really, really well. How are you, Mark? A gobble gobble geek and a gobble gobble gickle. <laughs> I wish turkey only cost a nickel. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, long ever. <laughs> uh, anybody recognize that beautiful Boston accent with the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I love that. That was a, that's a New England guy, Adam Sandler. He's right from New Hampshire. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I don't know him, that, but he's from my area. My wife was just in Vegas on a little girl's trip, and she saw him um, in Vegas, and she said he was hilarious. Yeah. He's um, awesome. And Rob Schneider, of all people, opened for him. So she really cool. enjoyed it. Uh, and then, of course, the one, the only, the guy who's just so hard to dislike, Eric Peterson. <laughs> Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. You know, uh, you know what I'm really thankful for besides um, the community and uh, the fact that we have so many blessings in our life between, you know, happy, healthy children and family and good friends and all of that. And you guys, you know, I, I'm, I'm really just grateful for. And this is something very personal between me and Eric is Eric Peterson will be at San Antonio boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of it was it was it was touch and go there so my it's gratitude for that 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 cup runneth over and so for those of you that have not been able to uh reserve your spot yet for boot camp do so now don't wait we are i know i think rooms are almost out at the jw you gotta email danielle for that help support the landgeek.com but go to the landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and uh and don't get locked out for the January 11th through 14th, two and a half day immersive boot camp. Um, also, get your first note for free. Go to geekpay.io. All right, enough plugging, gentlemen. Uh, let's talk about some issues going on. Our first order of business is the lovely, very hard to uh, beat algorithm Craigslist. So, Eric Peterson was on uh, Monday night's. Uh, uh, coaching office hours. Uh, office hours and uh, some of the issues that brought up were what, Eric? So, well, I think it's just, it's a very common question that comes up. It's um, this one's not so much an issue, but just, you know, how many ads are you placing per week and how many leads are those bringing you? And, you know, how do those convert that kind of, you know, um, information. I think that's something that uh, people in the community are always curious about and um, always want to talk about. Sure, sure. And I, I think the, the underlying fear is that they're not being effective on Craigslist. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. Right. So they're, they want to gauge, hey, are my ads being effective? Are they bringing in a sufficient amount of leads? So um, Eric, what was your response to that? So um, last night, I just kind of quickly looked at my, my reports from the previous week, and uh, I had placed about approximately 80 ads, which turned into about uh, 36 leads, I believe it was. So um, that was, that was kind of my result that I talked about. And then um, also I had a really good week last week and had uh, four sales. So um, when, when that part of the question came up, um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, I said, just cause those leads came in this, this week, you know, I mean, those could be people I've been speaking with for, you know, 30 days or more in some cases. So um, it doesn't directly tie, but nonetheless, it's, it's still uh, useful information. Yeah, absolutely. Tate, what about you? So, you know, this is a, it's a complicated question, right? I mean, I would say that on average, we're seeing about 50 leads come in a week. Now, we're 
having an average of 24 to probably 26 ads stick every single day on Craigslist. Um, and like Eric said, it's really hard to track this because I'm not going in and looking at which ad when it was posted that's producing the lead. Does that make sense? So Right, right. One thing that I think people are forgetting about with Craigslist is that it's all a numbers game. And if you look at Craigslist and you say that, hey, I'm going to post an average of 10 ads a day. If you post 10 ads a day and they all stick, that's 70 ads a week. But Craigslist keeps that ad posted for 45 days. So if you post 10 ads a day consistently, at the end of that 45 day time frame, you're actually going to have 450 ads live on the internet at any given time. And that's where we really start to see those huge gains. It's not about, hey, I've got 20 ads posted today. It's about, hey, I got 20 ads posted every single day for the last 45 days. I've got X number of ads available. My idea when it comes to Craigslist is to be everywhere. I want everybody to see my ad. When they look for land, I want my ads to be the only ones that come up. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, Eric's really not afraid since he had four sales last I mean, week. He, he beat me, so uh, I was giving him, I was thinking we need to do a round of applause at the round table, right? Like we we, we really applaud. should, we really should. Now, uh, I, had a, I had a bike accident last Friday. I had a, you know- The electric cockade. bike? The electric yeah. bike, I, he did I, I never said I was a good rider. So <laughs> I took a spill and my arms all jacked up now. So if I look like I'm funny, like I'm, this hurts. Like I'm in like chronic- sort of old man. Actually, you look pretty jacked there. You've been working out more, it looks like. Sizing down on his shirts. There you, there you, yeah, take, take under, yeah. Buy small, look large. Yep. Buy small, look large, baby. Um, <laughs> so, Mike, what about you? Yeah, I think you bring up some really good points. And I think that, you know, every day we're sticking out uh, 10, 10 to 12 ads and they're 100% stick rate the way that we're doing it. But I think the bigger question or the bigger point is the effectiveness versus efficiency. And that's my new mantra, right? Everything needs to be effective and then we can always work on efficiency. So, I mean, we can, we can go through, analyze numbers and whatnot, but the reality is you just have to be putting them out effectively. Now we know that the posting domination works you towards efficiency, but in the beginning, effectiveness is the key. So if uh, you need, however you need to accomplish that, you know, how many IPNs you need, whatever it is, um, I think sometimes people get caught up in this whole analytical process and then skip over just, you know, fundamentally doing the process. And you just want to be effective, right? You just want to get ads out there every day. The beautiful thing is we don't have to be the ones doing that, right? We know that, you know, it's something that has to happen every day. Tate's fond of saying there's a few things need to happen every day. But the beautiful thing is that we don't have to do those things every day. So I think the bigger thing that, uh, that we're pointing to here is in the beginning, yeah, you know, um, embrace the suck, you know, get out there, put the ads out there, be effective. And then worry about efficiency down the road. Be effective. Get four sales like Eric. I'm sure, um, you know, it, it's going to be more and more efficient as you go along. But, you know, nothing beats effectiveness, right? We all want to jump right to efficiency. We want to put things into processes. And, and that is the end goal, right? But not too soon. If you do it too soon, I think that you're missing something there. So I think, yeah, we put out, you know, 10 to 12 solid ads a day and they get 100% stick rate. If if maybe, no, I think I'm already honest, about 100% the way we're doing it. And it's right now, this is, I'm talking mainly about Laura because she's been doing really well. She made a few sales and um, she's doing this herself. And I just wanted her to be effective first, right? I said, it doesn't matter, just be effective. We can always make you efficient later. So I think that's uh, kind of maybe, I know that we, I, I hear these questions too, right? I know what Eric's talking about, but I think that the larger point here is, you know, we can go into all this analysis, which is good. It's good to have metrics and ways to evaluate, but you need to be effective. You need to just, you know, do it and not, you know, uh, like my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, you walk in circle thinking about something all day long before you finally do it. So I had to break that habit, right? You could think about something so long, but you could just go do it. So I um, hope that answers the question. I think it's just, it points to a bigger problem, not a problem. Well, I don't know, a bigger mindset issue. I, I, I think there's a lot of real wisdom in what you're saying because I, I, especially with the coaching clients, right. And all three of you have your own coaching clients. There is this sort of pull to scale fast and be efficient fast. And then the inevitable frustration when, you know, ads don't stick, like I'd rather be effective in the beginning and 
there is no law that says you can only post on Craigslist 128 ads a day, right? The law in our business is mailing and marketing and marketing comprises a large number of different channels. It could be Facebook. It could be your buyer's list. It could be eBay. It could be just Landmodo. at Landmodo. I mean, Landmodo, absolutely Landmodo. So, you know, that is just one channel. And I think there's a, um, a tendency to want to scale faster than be effective. And, and I think what Mike said is so true that when you start with effectiveness, then you can go and you can, and you can scale. And, and you even hear this in like Silicon Valley. In order to be big, you got to start really, really small. So that was really, um, really important, uh, you know, that what you just said, Mike. Um, Eric, before we go in the next subject, anything else you want to talk about with Craigslist? Well, I think uh, after hearing Mike, everybody's going to want to know how he's getting 100% of his ads to stick. I think that's a, a pretty rare occurrence. So you might want to elaborate on that. Yeah, well, I think it comes down to just, you know, like Tate likes to talk about seasoning accounts, things of that nature. I think it's just a very strategic process. You know, I think just like if, you know, if you go right out and you try to put something in autopilot and just have tons of ads posting right away, you're going to run into issues if you don't season things, if you don't take the process. And, you know, so yeah, we're not, if you hear it, we're, that's not a, that's not a, a hell of a lot of ads, right? 10 to 12, but the fact that they're sticking makes them very good, right? So we're getting 50 to 60 per week out there. So, and the buyers list is growing and the sales are coming in. So I think the reason why it's that way, that it's that effective is it's just a very methodical process that is not efficient really at this point, but it is effective. So I think that's why uh, we're getting that rate, you know, and if, uh, you know, if it starts to change, we'll adjust. But again, it's not, we're not, you don't hear me saying it was a hundred ads. I'd like to say we have a hundred ads out, but right now I'm happy that she's doing, you know, 50 to 60 and they're sticking to me. That's, you know, if you look, if I put out a hundred ads and I had a 50% stick rate or a 40% stick rate, then, you know, it's, so it's effective right now. I will argue that I will agree that it's not completely efficient, but I don't care about that right now, especially where, you know, the business that I have, mine's fully automated. I have someone that handles that for me, but with Laura and she's learning and doing very well, she's done, I think she's about 17,000 sales in the last two months. So she's done really well and, but she's, but she's effective. And I'm not really worried about her efficiency right now. That can come later on. You know, I just want her to get the effectiveness down. Yeah, I mean, 17,000 in sales uh, for you, Mike, that's like two dinners in Boston. <laughs> I mean, that's really going to move the needle for I you know. guys, for sure. Because, you know, when Mike and Laura go out, they go out big. Yeah, um, we, go, well, we have nine people. I get all my kids and their significant others. It's nine of us. Like, bring a potty. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and Laura's got expensive taste. She's like, Mike, I just did all these deals. Let's open the Cristal. And then next thing you know, oh yeah, you know, it, it gets out of control. But you know, that's, Good point. that's great. That's great. So for a lot of people that, you know, 17,000 is actually 17,000 for Mike, that's more like, you know, like a hundred bucks, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's great. Um, Eric, how much did you do? In, how much was your for sales enterprise value? Uh, you know what? I don't even know. Um, I could that, see that that's or... when you know you really have got some serious wealth. You when you don't even know it doesn't even matter. I, you know what that money just goes to my wife and I don't even look at it. No, I just I add those to my note income and it's just like you know incrementing up little by little. Um, I don't I don't look at the overall value a lot anymore because um, I care about adding to that that note portfolio. I see. Okay, um, great. But I'll I'll take a look and I'll. Uh, Give me a couple minutes. I'll come back to it. Yeah. I mean, before we, we move on to the next subject, uh, we do have to talk about um, an interesting quick question, which says, do you ever stop marketing an, uh, a property? Is there ever a good reason to stop marketing a property? Uh, Tate smiling. Tate? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of, this question makes me, makes me cringe. It makes me hurt inside. I mean, the simple answer is no, there's never a good reason to stop marketing a property. Never. There's no reason to stop marketing. I mean, unless you decide you don't want to sell it, right? Like maybe you decide, Hey, I'm happy spending money on this and I don't want to make any money on this property. I'll just hang on to it. Other than that, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Eric, any, any good reason to stop marketing a property? 
Well, first of all, I just added it up uh, about 14,000 in profit. Okay. So So. that's one meal for Mike. That's amazing. (laughs) Um, But back to the question at hand, Um, you know, I think certainly there's, there's no reason to ever stop marketing a property. However, um, I think there may be reason to consider marketing on a different platform, depending on, you know, how broad you're marketing that particular property. Um, maybe you're just not reaching the right people. So, you know, is there another platform you could move this property to, whether that's Landmodo or the other land sites or eBay or Backpage? Um, you know, typically people already have it on Craigslist. So, you know, I'm not going to mention that. Facebook, all those different, you know, platforms that we utilize. If you're not, you know, advertising this particular property on those um, that's maybe the first thing I would think about before just um, giving up on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Zano, what, what are your thoughts? Any, any good reason? Well, to- I mean, you could say when you sell the property, you can stop it, but that's not even really true because we, if you're buying property, like we all do, you're going to buy not one in the area. You're going to buy 10, 20, 30 in an area. Right. So you're going to want to keep, so I don't know, mailing and marketing. That's not too far. It's like, do you ever stop mailing? Well, no, unless you want to stop having deals, right? You don't stop marketing unless you want to stop having sales. So I guess if you throw the towel in and say, no mas, I quit. Yeah. Stop marketing. But other than that, no, I mean, that's, you know, adjust, overcome, keep going. Um, you know, um, I, this may point to, again, the same idea of frustration that people encounter. And there is going to be times of frustration and there's going to be times of elation. But if you can kind of like just keep it that steady balance in the middle, it's going to work out, right? So, no, I don't think there's any time because even if you sold the property, you wouldn't, I mean, you have another one just like it. I mean, that's what we do. We buy lots of property. We don't, we don't hinge our business on one deal, never. Yeah, I mean, to to take the extreme, you know, uh, example of this, when I sell property, and we have it posted on the website, we don't even market as sold. It's just another lead magnet. Now, we might obviously change the legal description to update it. But like Mike said, I mean, even even when it sells, we don't ever stop marketing it. You know, we want backup buyers to that property um, in case of a default, so that we can just pick up the phone or shout an email. Hey, you're up, but you're down, your down, your down payment. It's available now. So, um, yeah, it just becomes super, super efficient. What better way to create scarcity when tell them it's not available then, but I got another one and then they're going to want to jump on it. Right. Cause it's yeah. like, what do I got to do to have that one? Well, you know, there's, a, there's an easy way money. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, abs- yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I never thought I, I wanted an iPhone 10 until I couldn't get it. Right. So now that I can't have it, I, I, I want it. I mean, and the fact that Scott Todd has it before me, it's sort of eating me up inside. And, uh, but that's, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up. Oh, because of uh, scarcity. Yeah. So um, moving on to the next topic, freebie property. How do you get freebie property? Why would anyone ever even give you free property? So Mike, tell us your story. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just think we immerse ourselves in the land business. So um, over the last um, uh, two weeks, I've had six different parcels given to me. Now they're from two different people, but um, you know, I when I go into an area, I make friends with everybody. The county. I mean, I call realtors. I mean, I don't use realtors, but I become familiar with realtors. I want to know everything there is to know about a county, and uh, you know, become friendly with them. I buy um, you know donuts and coffee for the people at the county because I do appreciate their work. It does. Yes, they treat me a little nicer because of it, but the reality is, I am doing it because I appreciate it. So when I talk to realtors, I I, I also extend that same kind of courtesy professionally. And some people go to realtors and realize. Uh, you know, know, the realtor doesn't want it. And, you know, they, this, the realtor will say, Hey, I know this guy and he, you know, maybe you'd want to talk to him. So boom, I get phone calls and emails, people giving me property. And uh, you know, uh, I, 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 it's not a bad thing. You know what I do do though, is I tell them in the, in the same vein of your generosity, I'm going to donate to a, uh, some sort of nonprofit, some sort of charity, some sort of money. I'm going to donate when this property sells. So, um, you know, I think it's good to pay it forward as well. That's great. That's great. Um, let me see here. Um, I was just preparing my tip of the week here while Mike was talking. It's not working. Uh, 
Tate, what about you with free property? Yeah, I've had a couple people give me free property. And it's one of those things that until you actually get gifted something like that, you really don't believe that it's ever, I mean, you think that Mike's just full of hot air. It's like, <laughs> wait, what? People give that stuff away. And it's like, yeah, uh, I've also had the opportunity to acquire a few properties and then turned them down um, because there was issues with them. But yeah, I mean, some people just simply want to be done with it. And, you know, you can tell them, hey, the back taxes are so high that realistically, I can't pay for this land, but I'm willing to take it off your hands and pay the back taxes and have it be, you know, I'll take care of that responsibility from here on out. And, and oddly enough, people will do it. They just want to wash their hands of it. So it's weird when it happens, but uh, sometimes just because it's free doesn't mean you want it. You know, you, you still need to do your due diligence on it. You still need to investigate if there's something wrong with it and, you know, be cautious, but sometimes people are just that nice. I, yeah. I mean, I, I used to get free property all the time in the sense that, you know, the offer might be $1,200 and they owe $1,200 in back taxes. Yeah. And I say like, you know, you get a buck and um, you can just write off that, that, this deal is a tax write-off if you have income to offset. And a lot of times they're like, Oh, that great. Because they don't want it. They know they're going to lose it. They don't pay the taxes. And at least they're going to get the gain on that. So it, it does happen. Eric, you haven't gotten free property yet? No free property. Um, I've certainly bought a number of very cheap properties at, you know, um, around the hundred dollar mark, but uh, never, never got one for free. Mike smiling. He's like, I'm smiling at his new mustache and beard. I love it. He's very yeah, cool. yeah. You November. Know, is, go to go to the YouTube channel and watch it. <laughs> Rick's got a new style. He's looking sharp. Well, Tate taught me a new word I never heard of called Movember. Yes, that's the fight department. They're all growing mustaches. Next year we're doing it. I've I've never heard of it. I know. <laughs> we're not sports it's, people. See, well, I wear the hat, but you know, <laughs> it's just got a messy head. <laughs> yeah. So. um you know, That's I do. I do feel like, in a way, Eric has gotten free property because he took a seller from me. <laughs> in a That's way, a That's lot of free property. A yeah. lot of free property, and not to mention it was kind of low. No country for old men. <laughs> back foot, back, wow. back, full of cash on the plane he goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, there. Eric? Do you, There's a movie there. There is a movie there. <laughs> I start. I start working on the script today. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> young protege. I think Tom Cruise could probably play Eric. I don't know. It would probably be fitting. <laughs> Brad Pitt. But you know, with the facial hair. All right. We're All we're right. going off Thank the rails again. Okay. Um tips of <coughs> the week. Website, a resource, a book, something actual where the art of passive income listeners can improve their businesses, improve their lives. Actually, after listening to this podcast, say, I am so thankful for the Land Geek podcast and roundtable in the community. Tate Litchfield, what have you got? All right. Tis the season of gift giving. So um, I recently discovered a cool feature. It's, uh, some of you might already know about it, but uh, assuming you have Amazon on your phone, it's, I was out shopping and uh, – I was wondering if I was getting the best price for everything. So Amazon, if you open up the Amazon app in the upper right hand corner, there's a little camera. And if you click on that camera, it's got a couple different features on it. One of which is the barcode scanner. You can go up to a product, scan it and figure out if this is the cheapest price for it or if it's cheaper available on Amazon. So kind of a little uh, gift giving, uh, I don't know, tip of the week, but uh, I've been using it lately. And now my wife is killing me because I want to scan everything in the cart all the time. And I'm determined to get the best price possible, but it's kind of fun. But What's it yeah, called again? It's just built into the Amazon app and I had no clue about it. So if you just go to the Amazon app and you click on the little camera in the upper right hand corner, you can see that it's got a, a barcode scanner. It's also got like package x-ray and yeah it's got some cool features in there but amazon that's my uh yeah check it out it's pretty cool if nothing else it might uh 
save you a little bit of money when you're shopping this holiday season. Do you guys ever feel badly about showrooming? You know, basically you go into like a Best Buy with that barcode scanner app and then you, you save five bucks on no. Amazon or, you, you know, you go to Barnes and Noble, they're like your showroom and then you buy it on Amazon. Do you, do you ever feel like... I didn't know there was a name for that. Yeah, it's called showrooming. They, you know, these retailers hate it. Well, is it... What do you think, Mike? I think, you know... The educated consumer is important. I think I, I don't think we should feel bad, but I guess they're looking at money out of their pocket potentially. That's probably obviously, yeah. Most of them but will I, price match, won't they? They will. They actually, yeah, they will. So if you if you do it, I mean, it's not like you could go up to them and say, "Hey, do you price match?" And they'll say yes or no. If they say no, well, you know, that's their choice, right? I don't know. Just maybe I'm on your scanner and go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really don't know the answer. Put it on the belt to pay for it. You're scanning each one. <laughs> yeah, I'm scanning it, and then they're scanning it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, Eric, what about you? Um, are we on my tip, or are you asking what I it's think? It's a moral about? dilemma. Moral the moral dilemma of showrooming. That's an official word? Yeah. yeah I, I think uh, – uh, I don't think up. there's anything wrong with it. I mean – you know, I mean, as consumers, we all want to get the best value we can, right? I mean, um, giving the the store the opportunity to potentially match a price might be kind of a nice thing to do, but uh, but yeah. I mean, it's competition, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, that's good. That's a good uh, good tip. I'm gonna I'm gonna start using it. Uh, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? Show rooming. I even got my yeah. tip. Well. I, you know, I don't know if anybody's mentioned this, but I came across this and I found this to be very interesting. So has anybody mentioned time well spent.io? Is anybody on the, on the podcast? No. no. This is pretty cool. It's, uh, um, take it for what it's worth. These people supposedly, they had worked for some of the bigger companies, Facebook and whatnot. It's all about using your technology like to better yourself and to, as opposed to waking up and falling asleep on Facebook. And it talks about all kinds of, it has all apps you can download to your phone or your computer to, to, you know, just make it so you're using it more, um, I guess, attentively, right? You're using it in a way that's, you know, meaningful as opposed to just getting dropped into 24 seven, click, 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 click using. And it's really interesting if you read about what they're talking about. I mean, who knows how it's all true? I mean, yeah, are, are there really millions of Facebook ads, that, uh, Facebook profiles that aren't real just to generate a sort of consensus among people who have opinions and make them certain believers? I mean, this is kind of interesting. I think it's worth checking out. And the apps that come along that you can download for free or donate are really cool. I've already downloaded some of them. So I'm not going to quote this week. I'm gonna, I like this. I think this is kind of zen-like. I think this is something that, you know, question what's going on. And whether you believe it or not, why not take a look at it? I, I love this um, cool. because I struggle with this myself and I go back and forth and it's very, very difficult um, for me. It's interesting stuff. When you look at this, it's like the way that, you know, our society is morphing slightly based upon these different, uh, you know, you know, technological, I don't know, programs, Facebook, Twitter, uh, everything. It's just interesting. Especially with those of us who have kids, right? All of us here, right? We all have kids. So this is something that affects them like immensely, uh, the way that they view the world and themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. They have a thing here. Um, you know, what we feel as addiction is a part of something much bigger. There's an invisible problem that's affecting all of society. Um, Snapchat turns conversations into streaks, redefining how our children manage your friendship. Like my daughter, every morning, she's like, I got to keep my streak. And she yeah. does it. Um, Instagram glorifies the picture perfect life, eroding our self worth. Facebook segregates us into echo chambers, fragmenting our communities. YouTube autoplays the next perfect video, even if it eats into our sleep. Like my my sixteen year old does not watch TV; he's on YouTube all the all the time. So it's, there's something to it. I, I yeah, love it. it. And there's some apps down there at the bottom that are free, and you can use them on the Mac, or um, you can time. And there's even a, there's even another one I haven't. I haven't got it. I'm going to one of them is it kind of, you can log in and it tells you like how long you're doing certain things, but not just online, offline. You can, it just gives you a better picture of your day and what you're, what you're doing and where you could cut back on maybe certain things to make yourself more productive, like post ads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time. Well, look, you just spent two hours clicking on YouTube. 
<laughs> it's great. I don't know. I like it. It's cool. Check it out. Um, kind of like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, freedom is on there. Moment rescue time. This is great. Very good. Um, all right, Eric Peterson. What is your tip of the week? All right. So my tip has nothing to do with land today. Um, you know, it's, it's getting into the holidays. Um, you know, you might need to bring a card to uh, a family member or someone that's hosting you for a meal. Um, and I came across this kind of silly card. Um, there's a YouTube link to it. And uh, this is the website where you could get it. Um, <laughs> It's really silly. It's it's a card. You open it up, and this butterfly just flies out of the card and just scares you know whoever's opening the card. So um, I just saw it. Thought it was a lot wow. of fun. Think I'll probably get it from my mom sometime because I could imagine like her opening this card and screaming. So um, it's just fun. That's all. Oh wait, I got a, I got a uh, a four hundred four. I just watched the video. That's hilarious. What did I do wrong? I don't know. Did you click? I'm getting on a 404. It? Oh, you're missing out. It's so right, funny. Hold on. It's so funny. The video is on their website too, which it's a really long website, so I don't even want to wow, try. Wow, good to marketing. Look at only five hours and 17 minutes left. We're all going to buy it by the time. <laughs> but within five hours, we'll all have bought several of these. It's a good appetite. That's I don't cool. want to miss out. Only five hours the left. The magic flying butterfly. There's only $10. eight left. How many are you going to buy? I'm going on now. Hold on. Only Where did you left. buy it? I can't buy one. Eight left. I'm taking them all. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta buy cool. them from Mike. Buy nine, get three free. How can you do that? There's only eight. Oh. Wait, <laughs> butterfly card. I'm I'm watching the video. Thirty eight seconds. This is okay. great. I think they're lying to us, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> She's screaming. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is really cool. All right. So, well, I mean, maybe we can give it as a glue gift to our uh, our land customers, right? <laughs> yeah, Eric. As long as they don't have like heart problems, I mean, they probably won't forget me if I send them this. Hey, so. That's true. <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. So, all right, cool. Um, that's a cool uh, tip. My tip of the week is going to be based on gratitude, and there's a little website. I'll uh, we'll send it to you guys. Gratefulness.io. Check it out. And, uh, and let me know what you think. I, I do a gratitude uh, journal with um, the, the five-minute journal app. Um, but I also use gratefulness.io as well. And, um, you know, for this, uh, this Thanksgiving, I think it's just a good, a good practice to have oh. is, you know, to always be grateful for what you have and, and not be focused on, on what you don't have. For me, it's hard because... Again, Scott Todd has the iPhone 10 and I don't, right? But I should be grateful. I want to feel grateful for the things that I do have. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. So I want to, you know, I just want to thank all the listeners again and, uh, and let you know that I am truly grateful uh, for each and every one of you, your attention, um, your, uh, your, your, your contribution to the Langy community, and um, as we head into 2018, we're just going to have more and more better goodies and, and uh, Kaizen coming your way to really help move the needle in your life, uh, achieve more freedom, achieve more flexibility, all through passive income without any headaches like renters or rehabs, renovations or rodents. So guys, are we good? Yeah, yeah. great podcast. Good, good app. I mean, do you like gratefulness.io? That goes right into your journal. Is that what it does? It links or creates a journal. No, it, it goes to your text. So you apply to your prompts and add to your journal. So oh, you, you can add it to your form. journal too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty geeky. Um, all right. Well, I want to thank you guys. I want to remind the listeners. Also, um, give us some love. All you got to do is subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, I know by the time you read this, it will be actually read this here, hear this podcast is actually going to be after Thanksgiving. Um, but because it's, or two days 
before Thanksgiving, we didn't think about it last week like we should have. But next year, next next year, I put it on the calendar. We'll get it right um, for Christmas. We'll get it right for yeah, for sure, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Are we good? Great. All right. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Did Eric say that? Did, I don't think Eric. I think he just mouthed it. Actually, I think I he said did. it. I didn't hear it. We should take him do it solo. Solo. You know, without without Scott on the podcast this this week, um, I thought we were pretty nice to Eric because usually Scott will get the mini bat out. Like, don't mess with. <laughs> With Eric. <laughs> is Scott the instigator? Is that what we're discovering? No, no. Scott's got Eric's the compassionate back. Compassionate in- instigator. Oh, huh. Are All you right. going to grow that, uh, um, Eric? Is that going to be full, fully grown by um, saying, you know? This is about Antonio. as full as it gets, I think. Oh, okay. So. I have time off. I'm able to grow one a little bit. Maybe I'll grow one. We go with my hat and my boots. There you go. Yeah, that might be good. By the way, I, I, do, I don't know. Do you guys know that I'm really into shaving? Like I'm, I'm like fastidious about my shaves. Did I ever yeah. tell you guys that? Did you go to the auto shaving, that kind of stuff, like that what? little kid with the auto No, shave? I got, I've got like a straight razor, like like yeah, like, a, like the way my grandfather used to shave. I forget. I'll have to send you the link to it. It's really like this heavy single blade, I use and then a razor. I use the uh, I use the the brush, right. and I got this nice. Italian stuff like pre and post shave. Like I love shaving, but I don't do it like my wife likes me with a little, you know, scruff. So I get the, the kind of Eric Peterson look, but when I do shave, I love it. I like to shave. Do you too. sharpen that blade yourself? Uh, no, I mean I just change it like every ten days or two weeks. Okay. It's just it's disposable. Is it the safety razor one? Because that's what I use. It's I have to send you the link. It's really yeah. cool. It, it was a Kickstarter deal and kind of got big from that. This is like Crocodile Dundee. There's no safety here. This is no, real yeah. live blade. <laughs> You just go up and down. Don't go side to side. <laughs> <laughs> Big problems. <laughs> do you, I mean, Mike, do you use a straight razor or are you like one of those electric guys? No, straight razor. Yeah, that's dry. Dry. Oh. Yeah. That's manly. <laughs> what about you, Tate? I, I'm like you. I put on like a pre shave, I put on this like oil beforehand, and then I use the brush and then. I love it. It feels so good. Yeah, you gotta shave like yourself. the. Yeah, like shave, shave like your grandparents. Treat you know? yourself, right? Yeah. Actually, a lot of times Laura will shave my face for me. She's actually really nice like that. She's she she's very good. Wait yes. a second, are you serious? I am dead serious. She'll you gotta make a video around. of that. <laughs> Isn't there a James oh Bond scene about like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my daughter gosh. gets so mad all how how well I get treated. I can't believe it. You just want a coffee, it shows up. You want to, and it's just because she loves me, not because I ask. So I, I put that up there. Yeah, I mean, what's not to love? I mean, she just made an extra seventeen grand because, like, you know, you decided to go into this. Because <laughs> I love that, you too. Check out that link I just sent you. This is uh, from Skyfall, James Bond. It's when uh, Funny Penny shaves him. This is what I imagine Mike Zeno's life is like: sitting there. Yeah, speaking of Thanksgiving, Mike Zane has lost all complaining privileges. Like, I don't even want to hear him, like, like say, like, in San Antonio, I'm, I'm a little cold, like, in the room. Like, nothing. Tate, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> yeah, your life is tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> then I get out my new drink, Hendrix Gin and Tonic. Really? It's good stuff. It's, it's real manly, Eric. Gin. Gin. Gin's a manly drink. Here it is. Macau. This is a three minute video. I'm not. You know, I'll just skip a little bit. Go in like the 20 seconds in or whatever okay. it is. Where is this one, thing? one minute and like 50 seconds in. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. That's, this is how uh, Mike Zeno is living right here. The rest of us are just There's having to do it old school. Can you tell I've lost weight through this? I've been, I've been, I've been eating my pre flame meals, getting ready for Texas. Is it, does it show through? No, you look good. No, it, oh, it no, does. you look good, man. It's a double negative. What do you mean? <laughs> I said, do I look good? You said no. No, no, you, you said like, do I look? Oh, I, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I answered two questions at once. New bike I got. I got a Rogue. You know what that is? A, ro- a Rogue 
assault bike. How does that sound crazy? You use your arms and you, it oof, burns. Really? It's an assault bike. It's inside. You, you can do this. You, you can't crash this bike because <laughs> it doesn't move. <laughs> That's what I need. Right. It'll rehab your arm because you got to go back and forth. You need the rogue assault bike. Yeah, t- I'm, I'm like really messed up here. Rogue assault. Rogue assault. I like it outside though. So you, you, you. But can't you could be put it right in your yard, and it wouldn't matter because you had the most beautiful weather. You could just like put it on the patio and ride your rogue bike. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. You can't do that because of snow and the rain ruin it. All right. Thanks, guys. I got to go. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.